In computer programming, the scope of a name binding, an association of a name to an entity, such as a variable, is the part of a computer program where the binding is valid, where the name can be used to refer to the entity. In other parts of the program the name may refer to a different entity, or to nothing at all. The scope of a binding is also known as the visibility of an entity. Particularly in older or more technical literature, this is from the perspective of the referenced entity, not the referencing name. A scope is a part of a program that is or can be the scope for a set of bindings. A precise definition is tricky, but in casual use and in practice largely corresponds to a block, a function, or a file, depending on language and type of entity. The term scope is also used to refer to the set of all entities that are visible or names that are valid within a portion of the program or at a given point in a program, which is more correctly referred to as context or environment. Strictly speaking and in practice for most programming languages, part of a program refers to portion of the source code and is known as lexical scope. In some languages, however, part of a program refers to portion of runtime and is known as dynamic scope. Both of these terms are somewhat misleading. They must use technical terms, as discussed in the definition, but the distinction itself is accurate and precise, and these are the standard respective terms. Lexical scope is the main focus of this article, with dynamic scope understood by contrast with lexical scope. In most cases, name resolution based on lexical scope is straightforward to use and to implement. As in use one can simply read backwards in the source code to determine to which entity a name refers. And in implementation one can simply maintain a list of names and contexts when compiling or interpreting a program. Basic difficulties arise in name masking, forward declarations, and hoisting, while considerably subtler ones arise with non-local variables, particularly in closures. Definition the strict definition of the scope of a name is unambiguous. It is the portion of source code in which a binding of a name with an entity applies and is virtually unchanged from its 1960 definition in the specification of ALGOL 60. Representative language specification follow. ALGOL 60. The following kinds of quantities are distinguished. Simple variables, arrays, labels, switches, and procedures. The scope of a quantity is the set of statements and expressions in which the declaration of the identifier associated with that quantity is valid. C. An identifier can denote an object, a function, a tag or a member of a structure, union, or enumeration, a type def name, a label name, a macro name, or a macro parameter. The same identifier can denote different entities at different points in the program. For each different entity that an identifier designates, the identifier is visible only within a region of program text called its scope. Go. A declaration binds a non-blank identifier to a constant, type, variable, function, label, or package. The scope of a declared identifier is the extent of source text in which the identifier denotes the specified constant, type, variable, function, label, or package. Most commonly, scope refers to when a given name can refer to a given variable, when a declaration has effect, but can also apply to other entities, such as functions, types, classes, labels, constants, and enumerations. Lexical scope versus dynamic scope A fundamental distinction in scoping is what part of a program means. In languages with lexical scope, name resolution depends on the location in the source code and the lexical context, which is defined by where the named variable or function is defined. In contrast, in languages with dynamic scope the name resolution depends upon the program state when the name is encountered which is determined by the execution, context or calling context. In practice, with lexical scope a variable's definition is resolved by searching its containing block or function, then if that fails searching the outer containing block, and so on, whereas with dynamic scope the calling function is searched.
then the function which called that calling function, and so on. Most modern languages use lexical scoping for variables and functions, though dynamic scoping is used in some languages. Notably some dialects of Lisp, some scripting languages like Perl, and some template languages. Even in lexically scoped languages, scope for closures can be confusing to the uninitiated, as these depend on the lexical context where the closure is defined, not where it is called. Lexical resolution can be determined at compile time, and is also known as early binding. While dynamic resolution can in general only be determined at runtime, and thus is known as late binding. Related concepts in object-oriented programming, dynamic dispatch selects an object method at runtime, though whether the actual name binding is done at compile time or runtime depends on the language. De facto dynamic scoping is common in macro languages, which do not directly do name resolution, but instead expand in place. Some programming frameworks like Angular use the term scope to mean something entirely different than how it is used in this article. In those frameworks the scope is just an object of the programming language that they use that is used in certain ways by the framework to emulate. Dynamic scope in a language that uses lexical scope for its variables. Those angulage scopes can themselves be in scope or out of scope in any given part of the program. Following the usual rules of variable scope of the language like any other object, and using their own inheritance and transclusion rules. In the context of angulage, sometimes the term dollar scope is used to avoid confusion. But using the dollar sign in variable names is often discouraged by the style guides. Use. Scope is an important component of name resolution, which is in turn fundamental to language semantics. Name resolution varies between programming languages, and within a programming language, varies by type of entity. The rules for scope are called scope rules or scoping rules. Together with namespaces, scoping rules are crucial in modular programming, so a change in one part of the program does not break an unrelated part. Overview When discussing scope, there are three basic concepts. Scope, extent, and context. Scope and context, in particular, are frequently confused. Scope is a property of an identifier, and is fixed, while context is a property of a program, which varies by position. More precisely, context is a property of a position in the program, either a position in the source code or a point during runtime. Execution context consists of lexical context plus additional runtime states such as the call stack. Thus, when the execution point of a program is in a variable named scope, the variable is in context. And when the execution point exits a variable s scope, such as by returning from a function, the variable goes out of context. Narrowly speaking, during execution a program enters and exits various scopes. And at a point in execution identifiers are in context or not in context. Hence identifiers come into context or go out of context as the program enters or exits the scope. However in practice usage is much looser. Scope is a source code level concept and a property of identifiers. Particularly variable or function names, identifiers in the source code are references to entities in the program, and is part of the behavior of a compiler or interpreter of a language. As such, issues of scope are similar to pointers, which are a type of reference used in programs more generally. Using the value of a variable when the name is in context but the variable is uninitialized is analogous to dereferencing a wild pointer, as it is undefined. However, as variables are not destroyed until they go out of context, the analog of a dangling pointer does not exist. For entities such as variables, scope is a subset of lifetime. A name can only refer to a variable that exists. But variables that exist are not necessarily visible. A variable may exist but be inaccessible, or accessible but not via the given name of, in which case it is out of context.
In other cases, lifetime is irrelevant. A label has lifetime identical with the program, but may be in or out of context at a given point in the program. And likewise for static variables, a static global variable is in context for the entire program, while a static local variable is only in context within a function or other local context, but both have lifetime of the entire run of the program. Determining which entity an identifier refers to is known as name resolution or name binding, and varies between languages. Given an identifier, the language checks all entities that are in context for matches. In case of ambiguity, the name resolution rules are used to distinguish them. Most frequently, name resolution relies on an inner to outer rule, such as the Python LEGB rule. Names implicitly resolves to the narrowest relevant context. In some cases name resolution can be explicitly specified such as by the global or non-local keywords in Python. In other cases the default rules cannot be overridden. When two identical identifiers are in context at the same time, referring to different entities, one says that name masking is occurring, where the higher priority name is masking the lower priority name. At the level of variables, this is known as variable shadowing. Due to the potential for logic errors from masking, some languages disallow or discourage masking, raising an error or warning at compile time or run time. Various programming languages have various different scoping rules for different kinds of declarations and identifiers. Such scoping rules have a large effect on language semantics and, consequently, on the behavior and correctness of programs. In languages like C++, accessing an unbound variable does not have well-defined semantics and may result in undefined behavior, similar to referring to a dangling pointer, and declarations or identifiers used outside their scope will generate syntax errors. Scopes are frequently tied to other language constructs and determined implicitly, but many languages also offer constructs specifically for controlling scope.